Perfect. You got it on your phone. Awesome. Let me pray one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for sweet sound of worship, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, speak to our hearts, Lord, as we get in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, James chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. So one day, while flying his plane, a pilot noticed a small cloud up ahead. He decided to just fly through it. Once he got in the midst of the cloud, he realized that it wasn't as small as he thought. He decided to pull up out of it, but after pulling up for a long period of time, he decided to try to point the nose of the plane down to get out of his cloud. Still not able to come out of the cloud, the pilot began to get a little disoriented. With all of his maneuvering, he began to wonder if he was right side up or upside down. Sweat began pouring down his face because he didn't know his position in the cloud. He started to feel upside down. He checked his instruments and they said that the plane was still right side up. He felt like the plane had tipped over, but the instruments said the opposite. The pilot made a decision to believe the instrument, even though his emotions in leading him differently, it took all of his energy to believe that those instruments were telling him the truth. Finally, he came out of the cloud not far from the ground because the cloud was low. When he came out, he was right side up. Had he believed what he felt, he would have been a dead man but he acted on what the instrument said, even though he felt differently. While many times our emotions and our feelings will lead us to defeat, the word of God is an instrument, right? That gives solid guidance and direction that we can really count on, right? And we're going to see today that when seeking godly wisdom, we put our emotions and feelings aside. So today, as we continue verse by verse in James chapter 3, we're going to study the importance of wisdom. The teaching of today is, where do you go for wisdom? I believe the Bible shows us that there are two sources that we can get our wisdom from. We can get it from godly wisdom, earthly wisdom, but we know that many people get their wisdom from many other places. Social media, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, maybe favorite talk shows, maybe news channels, right? There's many places where we get wisdom from, and a lot of times we, it can lead us into this anxiety, this stressed out of whatever our emotions or whatever we're feeling, um, it'll guide and direct us in, in what we think is, is world, godly wisdom. And so James chapter 3, verse 13, let's pick it up in verse 13. If you have your Bibles, open up as we go through this first verse. It says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. We see right off, it says, who is wise and understanding among you? So I want to look at the value of testing. Look at the value of testing. And we remembered back in James chapter 1, verse 5, it said, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You guys remember that? And a lot of times we we lean on this verse because it said, you know, if we have not, we ask not, and let's ask for wisdom. God, give me wisdom, give me wisdom. You know, I, I need wisdom in this situation. I'm stressed out. Give me instruction. But here's the question. Do I really know if it is really from God. Do we really know if it's from God? See, just because you prayed and asked God doesn't mean that the solution that you have is really from God, right? I know testing, I have a pool in our backyard, but I know in, in the springtime, I have to test the water, Right? I don't really test the water. I just get a sample of the water. I bring it to Leslie Pool. That's cheating. So I bring the sample of Les- to Leslie Pool, but they check it and they say well, your pH, your your chlorine's high, whatever it is, because it'll turn green algae in the, in the backyard, right? And uh, it looks yucky. I've, have you guys ever had seen a green yucked out pool? Yeah, many times it starts growing on the walls, right? But 
if I just went off of just what I felt and what I thought and just start throwing chlorine tabs, like this is going to solve it. I've done that. And uh, now you have another problem. The other thing is the opposite. And so going there and letting them test it is really a good, huh, it's, the, it's the cheater's way. It's like having a Traeger, right? It's like a, a cheater's way of ha uh, being a good cook. Like, man, that meat was great. It's like, I got a Traeger. Right? Same with like, your pool is clean. Get it tested by Leslie Pool, right? But it's free, right? I go up there and they test it. They're the professions. I go up there and they tell me, put that in there, a cup of that and a cup of that, and I'm good. I test them and I, I rely on uh, their testing. And uh, so would you agree that, that testing is important? Even testing spiritually? Testing is important. And James is going to give us some qualities of real wisdom that will act as a test for decisions that we are making, right? So we'll look at the pieces of the test throughout our study today. We'll look at these pieces. Like how are we really testing the wisdom and the things that we are um, making these big decisions? There's big decisions to be made in life, right? All of us go through stuff. Sometimes we get at the other end of it and it wasn't that big, but we just was, were, wasn't looking in the right place, right? So in verse 13, it says, let him show by good conduct. That word show is important. We've seen back in, in James chapter 2, it said in verse 18, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith, my faith by my works. So faith isn't only the thing that can be seen. Godly wisdom should also be seen by our good conduct. How we live our lives, the decisions that we make. Just think about how you lived your life before knowing Jesus. I know the decisions that I made were nuts, right? It, it resulted in bad conduct. It wasn't hard to see by watching my life that, wow, he's making bad decisions, right? We see in our life before Christ that we look back, we're like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking, right? And part of our testimony, we part to start to see like, man, those are some dumb decisions that I made, right? And now on the other side of it, some of them are still dumb, but we, we have grace by the Lord and he, and he shows us and we get corrected by our, our brothers and sisters and they can come alongside us, right? I love when people, we talk about show me, right? Let's see the proof of what you're doing in your conduct of, of the wisdom that you're living in. We hear it at Fit to Serve. We, we test and retest, right? We have, we just went through back squats yesterday. Sometimes we never hit a one rep max ever, but we go four months and doing percentages and all of a sudden, here's a test. Where are you? The, the, the open's coming up. And all of a sudden, it's, it's once a year to see the test of where your fitness level is at. It's a test. And, and sometimes in the world, you see people who go to gyms or say, hey, I work out, I'm in shape, but there's no proof. Like, where's the test and retest? Where is, where are you going and where are you starting? And it's just, uh, I just go to the gym. So there's more to that. How do we, how do we allow the, the testing of where that level is? What, how, what's the proof behind it, right? And a lot of times it's in the simplicity of, on the fitness side of what are you eating? What are you doing outside the gym? And that can, a lot of times we can see where they're at in showing you. And, and you can see right away with the, the decisions that people make, um, big decisions in, in choosing what wisdom, earthly or godly wisdom. Verse 13, it says, as we pick up, it says, works are done in the meekness of wisdom. That word meekness is friendly, pleasant, gentle, humble. The word meekness is the opposite of anger and pride. Jesus said in the, in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus also described himself when he said, Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew eleven twenty nine. So our first characteristics of godly wisdom is meekness. 
Are we show meekness? Are we gentle? Verse 14 and 15. It says, But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. So we're going to take a look at some earthly wisdom. Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts. And the NLT translates this as bitterly jealous. Self-seeking is a desire to put oneself forward. Self. Fit to serve self, right? Our mission is becoming fit physically and spiritually to serve others. Yeah, others. Not self, right? And we see in the world, it's how can I serve myself? How can I have mirrors all around and look great? We know that's a byproduct of great fitness, that that will happen, right? If you transform the, your life from the inside out, not the outside in. Outside in is what people are looking for because it's instant gratification. Wow, just give me those glutes or give me those arms or give me... But it, we know it breaks down in seasons and they go crumble. You don't hear from them in times of it's not consistent over time, right? Jeff likes to say, stay in your lane. Keep your hazards on and be humble as he follows me home. And, no. <laughs> be humble. Stay in your lane, right? Stay in your lane and be, be good with where you're at for that season of time, that duration of how long that may take you. In other words, their, their life is all about me, 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 me. We, the, the presidency candidate is probably is, is starting to come. They're going to campaign in, in a lot of times. They're talking about themselves of how good they are and how they can prove that they're going to change things, right? That is a lot of it self-seeking, you know? Not all of it, right? But, but some of it is self-seeking. Pick it up in verse 14. Do not boast and lie against the truth. In other words, if you have envy or selfishness, don't claim that your wisdom has come from God as an answer to prayer. It comes from probably somewhere else, right? If you have this selfishness or this, this envy and you're wanting an answer right away and you're, you're praying, you're like, God has spoken to me, right? And, but your emotions and the flesh is speaking. You're like, you're looking for answers that someone will just give you the answer that you're looking for. And then when you cling on to that, you're like, yep, that's the Lord, right? Or you look for signs or or something will happen, but sometimes we have to put the emotions in our, um, what our feelings and what we're what we're wanting, and are we really seeking God? Verse fifteen: This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. In other words, your your worldly, unbelieving friends might give you this advice, right? The world, our worldly friends are going to have a different, probably, worldview. It would not be based on truth in, in the Bible. Peter had a taste of wisdom from above when Jesus asked, why do you say, what, who do you, sorry, who do you say I am? In Matthew chapter 16. Simon, he said, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. But yet, shortly after, Peter had a taste of the other kind of wisdom in his mouth. If we fast forward to verse 21 and 23. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the, from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. We need to be careful about where our wisdom comes from. It's not hard to take our our answers from what the world thinks is right. The world has an entirely different set of standards that may look right on the outside, but end up leading people into wrong decisions. Have you guys ever been there? Is that only me? 
the wrong decisions. They're like, for example, when it comes to sexuality, the world thinks that it's right based on the, what feels right, right? We see that right now. The perception changes with the culture. What seemed to be right 20 years ago is no, long, no longer seems right today. We as Christians have a different standard, one that doesn't change. Our standard is on God's word, on his truth. I remember growing up, dating myself, but like third or fourth grade, the Pledge of Allegiance. Have you guys ever read, uh, recited the Pledge of Allegiance in your classroom? So I remember being, getting chosen to go to the office to, read the, the, to do, recite the Pledge of Allegiance over this intercom. And every class, they put their hand on their chest and they looked at the flag. And it was like a privilege to be able to recite it to the whole school. It was nerve-wracking. And, uh, but we look at the flag. We would know what the flag meant. I pledge allegiance to the flag. You know, you'd go through that. You know what the stars meant, the stripes meant. You'd study it. Far from that today, right? Not even close, right? You don't even bring that up. Each kid was proud to be American, studying the flag, right? Verse 16. This is for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. That word confusion is instability, state of disorder, and confusion. And we, we see our country has had a great confusion over the last few years over gender identity. Our world no, no longer is willing to base gender on a simple biological fact, but what you think deep down inside, what, what feels right, right? What feels right. But the world wants to hide this stat. I, I, I looked up. It's 40% of transgenders have tried committing suicide. Because what happens when that feeling goes away and they want to feel, wow, that was a bad decision I made. And then they're just stuck with the stuff that we're still battling with even without that. Because they're not relying on the source that's going to give them true joy and happiness. They think by fixing things that that feel good at the time. And so that stat is, is not shared. It's alarming. But it's when you look into what people are chasing after. They're chasing after the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that we have knowing Jesus. Right? Those things change as the time changes. What feels great, what was right back 10, 20 years ago isn't right today. In the ESV version of James 3.16, it says, For jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. And so as we move to verse 17, if we're going to meditate on a verse or have a verse to memorize or hide God's word in your heart, this is a verse that, uh, that you can... Underline, circle, highlight. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. This is a great filter, seeing if our wisdom is from God. It's a great filter. It's not. There's still things that we have to step out in faith, but it's a great filter. The wisdom that is from above is first pure. We will, we will have the connection to the fruits of the Spirit a lot of times. He, James is um, kind of building this around the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Philippians 4, 8. Some of the things to meditate on. Philippians 4 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are, this is Diana, our, our good friend Diana. This is her verse. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these. Meditate on these things. The word pure 
exciting, reverence, sacred, pure from carnality, modest. So are the decisions uh, you're facing related to purity at all? Do they make you follow after God? Are they connected to the or connected to the sinful desires that we have? Let's say you're faced with a with the choice of what you're going to do one night. You're off, or maybe it's a Friday. Picture yourself hanging out. Maybe you're on the couch watching Netflix or going out and you're, you want to go somewhere. Jesus is sitting right by you. Would he be pleased with the choice you're making? Would you feel comfortable with Jesus coming along with you? Would you be comfortable with him being in the same room? Or would we say, no, Joe, hold on, go in the other room, Jesus, and then I'll let you come back in. Are we comfortable? We can run it through this grid and see. The choices that we're making, are they pure? Next, peaceable. Relating to peace and loving. God's wisdom is often accompanied with peace. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Does this mean that every decision God wants you to make is easy? Easy and peaceful are not necessarily the same thing, right? You can have a godly peace about something and still be in the middle of some pretty difficult times. Have you guys ever been there? Still be in some difficult times, but have a peace. We talk about that a lot here at Fit to Serve. Just having a peace. The world doesn't understand, right? What are you doing? God's wisdom promotes peace between people, between, between uh, uh, the relationships, not strife. In the Message Bible, it says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other as well. God's desire is that we work at making peace with others. Not a peace at all costs, but a healthy peace. Paul writes in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Every godly decision may not result in peace with, uh, with others, but we need to be sure to be doing our part. The word gentle, fair, suitable. Isaiah spoke of the Messiah he said, a bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench. Jesus doesn't kick people when they're down. When we're down, he doesn't just stomp on us, right? When the woman was caught in adultery, or was brought to Jesus, and the Pharisees demanded he pronounce judgment, Jesus said that anyone without sin can go ahead and throw the first stone. And in John chapter 8, verses 10 through 11, it says, When Jesus has raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers, uh, accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. He's, he's there for us. He's willing to help us in these decisions, right? When things are going bad, and we sometimes it snowballs and more and more things, the Lord wants to help us. Next is willing to, willing to yield. Easily persuaded. This is, not a, a con, this is in contrast with the earthly wisdom, which is self-seeking. We ought to be willing to, to take the time to listen to other people and yield to them if it's the right thing. Sometimes we make up our minds about a situation a little too quickly. And we're unwilling to listen to any other input. We just make up our mind. We're like, this is it. And we already know what the outcome is. We have no ears to really hear. In Proverbs 18, 17, it says, the, the, the first to speak in court sounds right, 
until the cross-examination begins. The problem comes when we, we make up our mind based on the first piece of information we receive instead of thoroughly investigating a matter. You guys ever been there? We are being a fool if we don't take time to listen fully to the other person. Listen to the other person. I'm guilty of this, right? Like, well, right away, you hear one side and you don't hear the other, other person. Or you didn't even give them a chance to even speak. And we already have formed. That's not fair. Proverbs 18, 13. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. Sometimes we simply don't take the time to listen to people and we make sure we've heard them correctly. We don't hear them correctly. Here's an illustration. Three old guys are out walking. First one says, windy, isn't it? Second one says, no, it's Thursday. Third one says, so am I. Let's go get a soda. You get it? You get it? Yes. So listening, I've done this. Like, what did that person say? Things can get mixed up, right? Like, no, I'm not telling you it's Wednesday, right? Windy. It's Thursday. I'm thirsty. No. Let's go get the soda. So we can mix up words, not hearing. And I know me talking fast and gibberish, they were like, what did you say? Right? So being careful to explain and also being careful when we listen. Next, full of mercy, kindness, or goodwill towards them the miserable, the afflicted, joined with the desire to help them. James has already used this word to speak about how we judge others. Remember in James chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Jesus says, For, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. We see wisdom from above has its roots in mercy. Though sometimes we make decisions based on being judgmental. Or even worse, sometimes out of revenge. Right? We have this, this anger built inside. Have you ever had a time in your life that you wanted someone to have mercy on you. Just have them show me mercy. Anyone? Yes. I always make it a good rule of thumb. If, if we want others to show us mercy, then we must show mercy to others. As we show mercy to others. And a good way to look at this is just look, look at the cross and see what Jesus did for us. The mercy and when you look at the cross and you look at Jesus, you're like, how can I judge or blame this others? Look what he's done for me. Great reminder. Keep your eyes on the cross, right? We always hear it, but when you really own it and it's part of your everyday life of recognizing what God has done for us. Good fruits. Fruit, fruit is the product of life. You're either going to bear good fruit or bad fruit. In regards to people falsely claiming to speak for God, Jesus says this, you will know them by their fruits. Matthew seven sixteen. In Galatians 5, 22 23, we also see the fruits of the Spirit as well. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness. Just run through those and put yourself in any of those characteristics. Do we fall in any of those? What, which ones do we need to work at? Next is without partiality. Don't show favoritism. We see back in James chapter 2, verse 1, he talks about this as well. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, without partiality. Wise decisions have no room for prejudice. 
without hypocrisy is next. Undisguised, sincere. A hypocrite is a person who is pretending to be someone they are not. A wise person is genuine. Not a person playing a part, not a person telling someone what they think they want to hear. Or wearing two hats. Hey, I'm this person on the weekend, on the weekday, I'm this other person. Right? How can we be consistent with what we say and what we do? How's our life matching up in those areas? Spiritually. And you can run this through as well on our on the physical side too. We want these goals, we want to acquire dot 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 but our actions matching up to what we say right new year's it's gone we're in february what are those things that we set forth for the new year there's action steps not just setting goals there's action steps and just moving forward in that what action steps are you are you making movement in each one of those are your actions showing what you're speaking. Verse 18. Now the fruit of righteousness is, is sown in peace by those who make peace. New Living Translation is it says, and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Godly wisdom isn't disconnected to the relationships we have with one another. The Message Bible uh, paraphrases this way. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives, that, that lives with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. And then back in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. I'm going to close with a story. Alfred Nobel, a Swedish physicist, 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 yeah, physicist, created dynamite. His intentions were awesome when he created dynamite. He wanted to create an explosive that could move rock to build roads and get things out of the way to build buildings. He wanted to create a force that was powerful and that would make life better. The problem is that people took his creation and used it for destructive purposes. To kill people and to make war. So depressed was Mr. Noble. That his good invention was being used in a wrong, destructive way. He took $9 million, put it in an account, and began to award people for promoting peace. We call it the Nobel Peace Prize. What motivated him was the fact that what he intended for good was being used for wrong. He wanted to award those who were doing what his intentions were. When these people get the award, they become internationally known as the Nobel Peace Prize winners. They are called by that name because they make peace instead of making war. God is looking for some noble peace prize winners. Some folks he can bless and award because instead of making war, they're making peace using his method that includes the blood of Jesus Christ. I love in the study how James wraps up the, the beati- he includes the Beatitudes and also the wisdom as we've seen today of Proverbs. So I wanted to wind up this morning by giving you a, a template of, be, of, of testing our wisdom or the decisions that we make. What kind of decisions are we facing right now? Is it a choice about maybe work, where we live, maybe kids or family? There are plenty of decisions that we make that we shouldn't be stressed over, but some are pretty important. Don't you agree? The place is to start is asking God for wisdom. We've seen that in James chapter 1, verse 5. The next step is to take a look in the mirror of God's word 
and think about the choices you've made or what are, what are ahead of you. And perhaps you ought to test your idea. So, we look at godly wisdom that we have above, and then we have the next slide will show worldly wisdom. And so this is in our study today, just a just kind of a grid to kind of run through decisions that we're making in our life. And where are we when we're faced with decisions? Do we run them through this lens? And maybe it's not on there. Maybe there's still, once you're on the godly wisdom side, there's still actions of faith as well that you have to walk in. We're all faced with decisions. Are you looking for the wise choice to make? That's the answer. That's the question. Pray for wisdom and then run it through the grid. Fit to serve family. That is today's good news about godly wisdom versus worldly wisdom. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your instructions, Lord. Everything in your word, we have the answer to everything in life that we need. It's right it's wrapped up. We don't need to seek after any worldly advice. It's, it's here. We just need to spend more time with you. Help us, Lord. Help us spend more time with you. The quiet time, uh, the corporate time, times when we're with our brothers and sisters and family members, that we would bring you up in, the, in conversation. You want to be a part of that. You're there anyways, so there's no way to, to hide you. But Lord, help us be more aware of these areas where we need to be wise. We need to be above approach. We need to, to be able to walk in the things that we are, that you would instructed us to walk in. Some are very hard. Some we do okay at. Lord, you know our hearts. Help us soften our hearts. Help us be more obedient and help us be more and more like you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.